Well, hello, John. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, episode 114 of the Hoopercast. It's uh, getting old. Getting old, man. Getting it's up a, there. We're, we're, we're trucking right along to the got that some, old... Got some commie years going on. Some what? Commie. Commie. Commie and Piccolo. <laughs> I thought you were talking about, like, communists. I think they're, like, hundred, <laughs> hundreds of years old, I want to say. I thought you were, like, you know, like, he's a dirty commie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, also been around for a long time. Though. But you... <laughs> 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 but, but you meant, you meant, like, oh, Piccolo. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, oh, commie. I sense some grave evil. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Oh no! You need some arthritis meds. <laughs> <laughs> you just look at him. You're like, "Ooh, you're in pain." I know. Yeah, you you look like you hurt. <laughs> I know you're in pain right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can't. Just made some muscle relaxers. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, uh, this is a a little surprise. Um. Uh, not really surprise episode, but. Uh, um, I said last week on the show uh, that we were going to have Michael Grayson back. Uh, oh, crap. That's going to be a problem. Let me uh, turn that text tone off. Um, they call him me. <laughs> I said it was going to be a, um, we were going to have Michael back, and um, Dustin had a work conflict tonight, and Michael has the flu. So um, I. Uh, what I, type of flu is it? Do you know? Uh. I, I've, it's like the stomach flu, or I, I didn't, is it like a? I didn't take a culture with his of his mouth. So I'm not too mm. terribly sure. Mm. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, I called up uh, called up our, our our trusty friend John um, to uh, to fill in graciously as he often does um, whenever I need uh, someone to talk to. So thank you, John, for being here. You're quite welcome. Um, we're just going to kind of freeform it today. Um, I, uh, I had a news item in particular I wanted to discuss with you and I had, um, I don't have the article in front of me anymore because we're using FaceTime to communicate today. But, um, I, 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 it was from comicbook.com was the one I actually, the article I actually opened and it was, uh, how do you say now the director of, uh, Thor Ragnarok, um, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like it's like it's like Taika Waititi or Waititi uh, something like Waititi something I don't know. Anyway, yeah. he um he was saying according to him they there there are discussions occurring right now about because we know the Incredible Hulk is going to be in Thor Ragnarok, right? Which is really exciting, I think. Um, yeah. And so one of the they've essentially removed the two most powerful characters from Civil War this way. Yes, yes. The two people who would who who would make a, a huge difference. Yeah, who would make a, a significant uh, <laughs> <Scales>. difference. <laughs> yes, it stacks yeah. stack the teams as it were. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so he he says that right now there's a discussion going on about how essentially how verbal and conscious to make the Hulk. Um, because as we've seen throughout the progression of even with you know, even I don't I don't want to include Ang Lee's Hulk. But if you really do look at just the Hulk on screen, but essentially, especially the Hulk within the MCU, you see a a, Hulk, a Bruce Banner who is becoming more and more in control of his actions while he is the Hulk when he willingly trans transforms into um, the Hulk, and so and and we've we've seen him speak twice actually, um, um, most recently in the Avengers when he slams Loki around and just calls him a puny god. Yeah. And um, so the discussion currently is. Yeah, he also said Hulk smash. He said Hulk smash. In, was that in, the other instance? Yes. Um, okay. And uh, but you could argue that doesn't quite count because that could just be considered a callback to the like the TV show or the uh, or the comic book. But with him saying puny god, he's articulating. You know, he's articulating an insult, and it. Right. You know, if I'm to break it down, it shows a lot more functionality, <laughs> um, and it's non-referential. So the question now, of course, is: um, Do we give him like a limited vocabulary? Do we have him articulate? Like, how, how far do we go with his verbal skills, and how far do we go with his consciousness? I mean, 
can he sign his name as the Hulk? You know what I mean? Like just little <laughs> things like that. Special like, checks. yeah, well, and, and, and if you look at the Hulk, I mean, I would consider him like the way I always felt about the, I'll let you speak in a second. I'm sorry. I'm going so long. Um, I, it just occurred to me though, the Hulk, especially now I have a toddler is I've noticed a lot with the, the movement, the incredible Hulk and, and just his, his basic behavior. It's very animal like, and it, um, and thusly it's very, um, young human being like where it's just, you know, the, the temper tantrum kind of movements he displays and his body language and all that. Like I, my daughter does that a lot. And, um, and so I, I sort of wonder, like, this is the next logical step is to have him have a, a, a small vocabulary and have a little bit more awareness of what's actually going on other than just breaking and smashing things. Um, and so I don't know what, how – I I would be excited to see that, but I also think they ought to tread softly. They can't have him, like, doing a crossword puzzle or anything. Um, but I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Um, uh, I mean, I, I think – it would be jarring to see him speaking in complete sentences kind of out of nowhere because uh, this will be the first time that you see him since Age of Ultron, so it can't feel too different from that. But but I, I like the idea of him talking a little bit more and, and um, you know, there was a period of, uh, of time in the comics where he was basically Bruce Banner as the Hulk and he could basically function as a, as a normal person while... Uh, transformed into the Hulk, so maybe they're moving towards that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I know that the director has said that he basically wants to make this like Midnight Run with Thor and the Hulk. So I I don't know that there would be a way to really do that without having him speak a little bit. So What does he mean by that? Uh, Have you ever seen Midnight Run? No, I don't don't even know what the plot is. Oh, uh, Midnight Run is... um, Basically, Robert De Niro is is tasked with uh, uh, escorting Charles Grodin. I think he's, it's been a while since I've seen it, but Robert De Niro is is I think maybe like a bounty hunter, and he picks up Charles Grodin, who's like a, I forget he's like a criminal or something, and he has to transport him across uh, the United States as his prisoner uh, in a certain amount of time to get him to this certain place, and it's kind of like a it's like a buddy comedy in a way because they start off as enemies and then eventually they become uh, close and it's it's like a it's like a comedy film really but it's like are these two people who wouldn't get along or suddenly kind of put into this situation where they have to work together and and I, I believe that there's someone else chasing them also trying to get Charles Grodin if I remember correctly but it's been years since I've seen it but but I, it's an interesting idea for the Hulk and Thor and and really this movie so and again it kind of ties in with marvel doing more uh, targeted genre films and things like that so right yeah so 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 you're in favor of a more verbal hulk then yeah in if you sparingly yeah i don't want him to be able to communicate you know extremely well i still want it to be the hulk and not the the comics version of Bruce Banner as the Hulk. Yeah. I, not that I would be opposed to seeing that eventually, but I think at this time he's better just kind of as the Hulk. But but I'd be open to seeing him you know, communicate a little bit more. I think yeah. they've been moving to that since since the first Avengers. So Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree that because the comics Hulk is like full sentences without, right. you know, definite articles and stuff, without like the or right. a, but pretty much functionally verbal. Um, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we saw that in Age of Ultron where, like you said, he's kind of more in control with what he does. Like he's able to kind of stop and let Black Widow calm him down. And, and yeah. I think he's able to, obviously able to pilot a ship while, while you know, transformed into the Hulk. <laughs> so it's, it's no longer just thrashing about like in like we saw in the helicarrier in the first avengers but yeah it's he's kind of more in control if he's not even if he's not always able to control whether he transforms once he transforms it seems like for the most part he's gotten a handle on doing kind of more mundane things as the hulk so well yeah and and yeah i guess for me it's 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 i don't really care how much he says it's or i i rather i i don't care if he says nothing but for me, it's, yeah, it's not it's not so much about words and vocabulary as it is about the yeah level of control. I do think he ought to exercise, be able to exercise more control over it. So, right. um, 
Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited. I wonder how he, I wonder how he gets to Asgard or at least to outer space. This is kind of getting the wild card in Phase Three, I think. The, yeah, the, the biggest question mark, but yeah, it's, I think it's the film in Phase Three that I'm most excited for, though. At the same time, so yeah. Well, and here it, it's it's a double. No, it's not really a double edged sword, but let's call it like a soft double edged sword where. Where it's the biggest question in Phase Three, but if you really think about it, we only know he's in it because we read the trades. Like it's not like the stinger is Bruce Banner wakes up and you know Heimdall says like "Welcome to Asgard" and you're like "What?" You know, like it's not yet. It's just like it's just been announced that he's in it, and so for right. me, it's just like I, I'm excited for it, but I also feel like I didn't really earn they didn't really earn my excitement because it's just it's a press release that told me this information, you know. Sure. Um. Yeah, though I mean, it, 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 you, so you are thinking that's the most anticipated phase three for you? I, I think for me, yeah, because More I than, think that this this is going to tie into the larger universe in a way that yeah, some of the other films aren't. Like I, yeah. after I saw Age of Ultron, that this became the film that I was the most excited for. And, I know what and, you mean because uh, now you're yeah. you're 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 more interested in in the in the overall plot with the stones and with Thanos right. and the right. cosmos more than more than what's going on with the characters on earth, even though that is interesting stuff. And, and obviously looking forward to civil war in May, but, um, yeah, but I, I I agree. I'm a little more curious about this. Um, especially because I I feel like Thor, um, you know, was one of the characters in the Avengers films, both times who kind of got shafted in terms of like development and time. Um, and even in his own sequel, Kind of, you know, and this director of of Ragnarok even said like, because I think someone else um, in the interview brought up brought up that concept to him that like Thor is kind of kind of gets the short end of the stick when it comes down to cutting scenes, and he said, "No, I know, and I want him right. to really be the most interesting character. I want Thor to be the most interesting character in this movie." Um, right. Which is good. Y- exactly. That's the <laughs> that's what I want to hear from the director of the yeah. of that film. You know. Because I think I think Thor is my favorite of the of the characters in the MCU. I think Thor is probably my favorite one. It's tough he's for not, me to he's pick. Not there, Steve Rogers uh, as my favorite, but I, see, uh, I, I I've got the I I really like them all. I mean, I obviously I like, like them all too. Yeah, I obviously not a bad one in the bunch. I mean, I, I to be honest, I'm least interested in, in Black Widow, and yeah. that's not really anyone's fault but the writers, I suppose. You know, I mean, it's there's just she's. I mean, I mean, it's not really her fault. She has no powers and all that. And neither does Hawkeye. But you know what went a long way for me, honestly, was the farm stuff, the farm scene from yeah. Ultron. Because all of a sudden, I just felt like I knew who he was. And I was a hundred times more interested in his character and a hundred times more invested in what happened to him. You sure. know, after learning he had a family and he was like a pretty much like a, you know, a, a, a middle America, you know, other, you know, essentially blue collar dude. Who just right. happens to be a government, you know, spy? Right. Um, and he got shafted in the first Avengers. He really did. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and I, I obviously, I really like I like Stark. Although they need to, it's good that they're doing something different with him for Civil War, like making him kind of the bad guy. But yeah. he, his his arc is sort of all over the place overall. Like he needs to. I, again, they're doing something with him now, but um, I know that Dustin's big problem with Tony Stark is that he does what he does uh, out of guilt, which is not in and of itself a bad motivation. But after a while, you need to give him some other reason to be, and sure. you can't just have him every single time kind of be like the tortured smartass. You know, you gotta gotta give him something else. But no, I really like Steve Rogers too, and I like. I like Thor. I just wish he had more to do in a more central uh, role. Yeah. So maybe maybe this will be it. It'll yeah. be nice. I mean, I, I think the first Thor movie is is one of my favorite uh, films in the MCU. Uh, and the second one is not my favorite, but every time I watch it, I like it better than I did. So, uh, you know, this one, I don't know. It seems like it's going to go to a place that none of these other MCU movies have gone to yet. And, uh, I've heard it was like, it's like a road movie. So that sounds interesting to me. Kind of a cosmic road movie sounds fun. So, uh, 
Yeah, and like I said, it's going to play into that Infinity Stones, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for it. So. Yeah. And I like that Marvel picked... Uh, uh, Marvel has a really good knack for picking these directors who you wouldn't expect or think think of, so I'm excited to see what he, this guy can bring to the table because they have a really good track record of picking directors that are kind of niche directors or directors that have never done a movie like this or even a movie to begin with, so you know, I'm excited to see kind of what a new uh, director brings to Thor. So Yeah. Hopefully it's more in line, because I, I felt like the second film was a little bit out of tone with the first film. But hopefully they kind of course correct that, but that was one of my major issues with the second film. But Yeah, and Malekith. And, yeah, Malekith, yeah. <laughs> he was pretty terrible. <laughs> I think he's the worst MCU villain. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> he's unquestionably bad. Yeah, yeah. Um... I thought that Chris Pratt had he had done something about with. I know that Guardians Two is shooting right now, yeah. um, so uh, who, in Atlanta, yeah, in Atlanta. Um, yeah. So who who knows what uh, what'll be on that in that little basket of goodies? Yeah, um, I'm curious. I'm curious which two films these uh, Infinity the, the the remaining Infinity Stones will pop up in. It's pro- it's gonna have to be Ragnarok and Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, yeah, that that makes sense. You know, I I yeah. feel like I feel like you need to put, yeah, Doctor Strange for sure. Because what do you remember? Which two stones are left? Oh gosh, uh, well I think we've seen the the Power Stone. I think we've seen the Reality Stone, the uh, Time Stone, and see. the Mind Stone. So, um, so I think the, there's the Soul Soul Stone left. Uh huh. I don't, I don't remember. And what then the there's ah, uh, sh- the Time Stone. The other one. I thought you already said the time stone. Did I? You may have said it, but I don't think we've seen it yet. No, I think that's one of the ones we haven't seen yet. Right. So the soul yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I, I wonder. Time. So I'm wondering if that's if the soul is going to be much more of um, uh, Thor kind of stuff. It could be in po- Guardians of the Galaxy too, but possibly really. I mean, it, I don't know what the Soul Stone really does or can do, but to me, that seems like a concept kind of linked, sort of a little bit to to the Hulk being in that movie. You imagine what would happen if the Incredible Hulk like was holding the Soul Stone, like what it does to a person who essentially has two two identities. Right. I don't know. I don't, it, I, it, it could be in Guardians because uh, Adam Warlock. Came from the Soul Stone. He he like lived in the Soul Stone, and I think he's going to be in Guardians too. Who the hell is Adam Warlock? Adam Warlock is uh, he was the he was seen in, in the Collector's Space. He was that giant cocoon that was in one of the. Uh, oh, but he he plays a really important part in the Infinity Gauntlet comic. Uh, he's kind of like one of the bigger characters in that. So, but he 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 like came from the Soul Stone. He used to like live in it. Oh. I don't know. If I don't know if they'll go that route in the film, but uh, I think they've they basically confirmed that Adam Warlock is going to be in Guardians Two. I think, but I don't know. They should have him played by David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. You just pop up like hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how his first name's Adam. Yeah, he's from space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, your last name is Warlock. I'm Adam. It's not. Uh, it's okay. not. not <laughs> yeah, yeah. Glebe work warlock. <laughs> you <Ben> know. Solo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ben. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> why'd you really pick? Cool last why'd name you pick? Just kind of a normal. Yeah. Name. <laughs> yeah. So your last name Solo. Why'd you choose the name? Why'd you choose the name Ben for your son? Ben. Uh, well, we're Jewish, so we thought that uh, naming him after <laughs> Benjamin would be uh, <laughs> quite meaningful. <laughs> Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. <laughs> Jim Warlock. <laughs> that was his father, Mr. Warlock. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, be good. It'll be uh, it'll be uh, interesting. Uh, we got two this year, right? We got Civil War and we got Doctor Strange. Right. I think we have two from now until eternity, I think. I think they're doing two a year every year. Oh, now. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Now until it turns. So I think next year is uh, Black Panther and Doctor Strange. No, I thought Doctor Strange was this November. Uh, not Doctor Strange, I'm sorry. Uh, Spider-Man. 
Wait, hold on. Is Ra- hold on. Ragnarok is not. Ragnarok is a couple years from now, right? Yeah, because Ragnarok got pushed because of Spider Man. Got it. Pushed back. Interesting. So I think next year is Black Panther and Spider Man, and then after that is Guardians of the Galaxy two and, and probably then Ragnarok. Four. Yeah. And then somewhere in there is Captain Marvel and Ant Man and the Wasp. It's been, they both take place, I think. Before, no, I think I think actually Captain Marvel is after the first Infinity War movie. Here, let me let me take a look. Um, so May sixth this year is Captain America: Civil War, and Doctor yeah. Strange is November. And then in 2017, we have three movies. Ah. We have Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Spider Man. Yep. And Ragnarok. Wow, I thought Black Panther was much earlier than that. I guess no, not. Black Panther is in February 2018. Okay. So it's about four months after Thor. Okay. Um, and then, in, yeah, 2018, there's Black Panther. And then there's um, Infinity War Part 1. Okay. Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. And then in 2019, there's Captain Marvel, Infinity War Part Two, and Inhumans. Right. Okay. And that's and that's all that's been really um, announced. Announced at this point. Right. So uh, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Now, yeah. um, I uh, tangentially related to this, there was uh, I think Bob Iger came out and essentially said what everybody was already thinking, which was, um, <laughs> yes, we're going to keep making, we're, we're not going to stop making Marvel movies or Star Wars movies, um, we, we being Disney. Um, and uh, not we being like him and his son or something. <laughs> um, Father-son production company. Yeah. And by the way, on that note, we're never going to stop making Teletubbies movies, and we're never going to stop making Power Ranger <laughs> movies. I'll just whatever properties I want. But uh, but we Disney uh, will not be making will will not be making anything less than more Star Wars and Marvel movies. And I I guess I don't want, we don't have to talk about it too long because it's kind of a dead point. Because again, it's it's kind of like okay, I know, right? But shocker. But but there I, there are people who are totally like put off by that, as if like commercialism is the death of art. Right. And it's not. It's just a separate element of it. You can. It's it's a pendulum. You can you can you can indulge more in the commercial side or more in the artistic side, and you can hit that kind of this perfect this perfect mix that the Marvel movies hit where it's, yeah, it's probably a little bit more commercial than artistic, but it has, it does have artistic integrity and it hits just the right amount of it to where they're good films without being, um, too, uh, without, w- w- while being broad enough for a wide audience. Right. And for, for, for anyone to take issue with Bob Iger essentially saying, yeah, well, why do you think we bought these properties? We want to make movies with them. Like, right. Dilly. <laughs> And, uh, you know, like, like we were talking about Adam Warlock. I mean, eventually they could make an Adam Warlock movie. Yeah. And they could make, they, they have literally so many characters to choose from that they could have, you know, dozens of films based on these lesser known characters. And, uh, if they're good, people will still go see them. I mean, uh, uh, something like Ant-Man or Thor or even Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, those were all considered kind of iffy properties at one time. And now, you know. They're all huge hits. So. Yeah, super popular. Uh, yeah, so uh, really they have so many characters that were once kind of considered B and C list or characters that could, in fact, just kind of step into that blockbuster mold. And so, yeah, it makes perfect sense that they continue doing it. And, and you know, th- these comics have been going for decades, so why can't the movies? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um... Okay, well, let me um, let me just take care of some quick business real quick. I would like to uh, just remind everyone that this episode of the Hoopercast is brought to you by Letterbox. Uh, right now, listeners of our show have the chance to win a free one-year pro account upgrade or extension on Letterboxd. John, do you know what Letterboxd is? I do. Good. But for those who don't know, uh, Letterboxd is a, is, is a social network for movie lovers that lets you track, rate, and review the films you watch. You can follow other members and get recommendations for the movies they like. You can publish lists of films and a lot more stuff. Um, what's great about Letterboxd is it's free to use, um, but a pro account provides 
additional features such as a customized summary of your past year's viewing. So if you want to get a one-year pro account upgrade, or if you already got a pro account, but you'd like a year without paying the premium for it, um, you can actually email our... Sorry, I hit the mic there again. You can actually email our show at hoopercast at gmail.com for your chance to win. So just listen to the show and uh, to figure out what the month's code word is. The code word for February is Paul, as in Paul Walker, Paul Rudd, all the Pauls we mentioned in last week's episode. The keyword, again, the code Paul word, Warlock. Paul Warlock, his brother. <laughs> um, yeah, the code word for February is Paul. So just email hoopercast at gmail.com, type the word Paul in the subject line, and please include your letterboxed uh, username because otherwise I, I can't I can't even consider you for the upgrade because I only know your real name. Um, so just follow the instructions, please, if you'd like to be qualified. Um, we select the winner at the end of each month. As you, as you know, if you listened to the show last week, um, what's his name? Tom Cassidy. Holy shit. I just grabbed that right in my head. I remember that guy's name without <laughs> reading anything. Congratulations, Tom Cassidy. You are stuck somewhere in my brain and you will never, ever leave. I'll never let you go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Tom Casty was the, was the premier winner, uh, the January winner of the, this Letterboxd uh, promotion, promotional giveaway. And um, so if you want to be like Tom, email us with the code word and your info, and you could be eligible to be the February winner. And we will read that winner at the end of the month. You can also follow our show on Letterboxd. Just search for HooperCast, letterboxd.com. L E T T E R B O X D dot com. So that's letterboxed. Um, for those of y'all who, uh, you know, who didn't know, now you know, dude. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Um, I was trying to find a tasteful way to finish the Biggie Smalls lyric, and there was not one. There wasn't <laughs> one at all. Um, John, let's talk real quick about what's coming out, um, or what's in theaters now. Um, what is coming out, you know, this is, today is Friday or beyond, reminder. So, in theaters, yeah, I was going to say, I would feel like our choice, um, between, huh, our choice among the movies being, uh, The Choice, Hail Caesar, Einstein and Guananwato. Whatever. I'm not going to see that movie just because it's so hard to pronounce. Um, or Regression or Tumble Down. I would definitely say that Hail Caesar is probably our pick this week, right, John? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I, I, just, I don't know what any of these other ones are about, but I know they're not directed by the Coen brothers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good stuff. Yeah. Um, are you going to go see it this weekend? And, and it stars Thanos. It does star Thanos. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think I will go see it this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got some, uh, I've got some gift cards that I would like to expend and, uh, I'm, uh, thinking about what I'm going to go see. I'm, I'm really thinking about going to see Deadpool in a couple of weeks. I'm really thinking about using, yeah. using that, that, that thing and just going, um, you know, on like on Saturday or something, not this, right. you know, but the Saturday it comes out. Um, right. I really think that will be a good theater movie. Sure. Um, God, I keep hitting the mic. Uh, um, Oh, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, um, in preparation for our uh, our list, our um, our best of uh, 2015 list, I'm I'm going through the whole year. I'm really trying to track down and watch every movie from the year that I really had any interest in. Um, sure. So so far, I've tacked among the ones I'd seen all year. The ones I rented to catch up on, I, I, I although well, I rented The Kingsman, but I don't even know if that's from 2015. Is it? That probably, I think it is. It is, like from so, early. Yeah. Okay, well, early, I, like February 2015. I think. Yeah, I watched The Kingsman, and then I just I I watched uh, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation today. Okay. Um. So I'm uh, you know, that's from like obviously later in the year, but I'm going through like month by month, and I'm just saying, all right, which ones, which ones I got going. So sure. uh, yeah, man. Um, dope. dope. Anyway, uh, I don't know what the show's going to be next week for anyone who cares about me accurately telling you what's on the agenda. There's no agenda. Um, 
Dustin will be back. Maybe Michael. Maybe John. Who knows? <laughs> Don't even know. Don't know. Don't know. But John, it was good to have you, as always. Well, thank you. We'll it keep, was nice to be included. We'll keep this one short this week. Uh, you know, save a save a few things. Uh, Dustin and I want to talk some DC film news at some point soon because uh, they're rolling out all their stuff and it just looks terrible. So <laughs> I've got to pick Dustin's brain about that. Um, anyway, all right. Well, um, thanks everybody for listening. Thank you, John, for participating. And um, see you guys later. Uh, Woo!